2nd, 2024. It is 7 p.m. We thank you for being here tonight. We have a lot on the agenda, and then we also have a closed door session to go into. So um, stick around if you want to. Uh, I'm gonna start with a moment of silence for our invocation, and then we're gonna have a Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll call upon Commissioner Ballard, Roger Ballard, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand for a moment of silence? Commissioner Roger Ballard, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wow, nice. You understand. Thank you very much, Commissioner Ballard. Next item on our agenda is the roll call. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. Commissioner Ballard. Present. Commissioner Lance. Here. Commissioner Morris. Here. Commissioner O'Donnell. Here. Mayor Binky. Here. Commissioner Reynolds. Present. Commissioner Simmons. Here. Commissioner Smith. Present. Vice Commissioner Vice <laughs> Mayor, sorry, Sophia. Here. Thank you. Alicia, thank you very much. Next item on our agenda is the proclamation for Pride Month 2024. I would like to ask everyone that uh, would like to come up and either participate in the presentation or even say something uh, to meet Commissioner Ballard and I in the middle. I'm going to start out by having the president of the local pride organization say a couple words and maybe give us a highlight of what to expect when the parade is and stuff like that. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Dina. My name is Dina Spencer, and I am the current president of Battle Creek Pride. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for everybody that's up here. Um, I want to give a quick short version of why we are celebrating Pride in July here in Battle Creek. We do this so that we can support other organizations and other communities. We can attend their festivals and this also gives them an opportunity to attend ours and that way we can all support one another um, throughout the state at various cities. So we have four nights of events. We have Thursday night, we have a trivia night. This is an educational called, um, event called LGBTQ&A at the Miller Stone Building. We have a Friday night parade followed by a family-friendly drag show in partnership with Cafe Rica um, that will march down Michigan Avenue and end there in front of the um, restaurant. Then Saturday we have a festival from noon to eight at Lila Arboretum followed by an 18 plus dance party in partnership with Club Vortex out of Kalamazoo that will go to midnight. And then on Sunday we're gonna wrap up the weekend at our resource center at 104 Calhoun Street doing a candlelight vigil and this is so that we don't forget why we are standing here and the fact that we are able to stand here and that people paid the price for us to do this um, with violent means and it's not forgotten that although we celebrate, we didn't always celebrate. So, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I'm gonna read half the proclamation and ask Commissioner Ballard to read the other half and please um, allow me to read it this time. Whereas the city of Battle Creek, Michigan is a welcoming community that recognizes the importance of equality and freedom and is committed to expanding the visibility, dignity, and equity for all people in our city. And whereas our nation was founded upon and is guided by a set of principles that includes that every person has been created equal, that each has his rights of their own, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that each shall be accorded the full recognition and protection under the law. And whereas our society continues to take steps to prevent hate crimes, discrimination in housing, employment and services, and the denial of American liberties and basic human rights, and the city of Battle Creek is committed to upholding these protections by enforcing the 2013 non-discrimination ordinance, making it a law in the city. And whereas Battle Creek has a vibrant L 
LGBTQ plus community comprised of thousands of individuals, families, and supporters who are integral part of the fabric of our city and who contribute throughout the year to its economy, the quality of life as elected and appointed officials, public and private entrepreneurs, business owners, educators, clergy and church administrators, parents, students, homeowners, charitable contrib contributors, volunteers, and more. And whereas progress had been made, there remains a significant opposition with respect to the equitable treatment of LGBTQ people in their communities, and it is therefore important for cities like Battle Creek and countless other Calhoun County organizations to demonstrate support for such residents. And whereas June has become a symbolic month around the world for LGBTQ plus people and allies to come together in various celebrations of acceptance, equality, and pride as they have since the 1969 Stonewall Uprising, which served as a catalyst for the modern day LGBTQ civil rights movement. And whereas President Joseph R. Biden Jr., by virtue of the authority vested in him by the Constitution and the laws of the United States proclaimed June 2023 as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer pride month in these United States and called upon its people to recognize the achievements of LGBTQ plus community to celebrate the great diversity of the American people and to wave their pride flags high. Commissioner Ballard, I saved three paragraphs. <laughs> okay. Where is the rainbow flag, also known as the pride flag, has been uh, used since 1978 as a symbol of the LGBTQ plus social and civil, civic uh, rights movement, civil rights movement, and flying the rainbow flag at the city hall during the month of July symbolizes the nationwide celebration of diversity, inclusion, and support for all lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and queer, queering residents. And whereas Battle Creek has adopted July as a symbolic month for which the LGBTQ plus people of all sexual orientation, gender identities, and gender expressions, and their supporters and allies come together in the celebration, and we celebrate the pride during the month of July. Now, therefore, on behalf of the people of Battle Creek, I mark. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of the mayor and, beh and on behalf of myself, as the commissioner for Ward 1, the, uh, in the city of Battle Creek, Michigan, do hereby proclaim the month of July 2024 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month. In the city of Battle Creek, and invite each of the neighbors and reflect upon the ways in which we live and work together with a commitment to mutual respect and understanding for all people and further recognize Pride Month by flying the LGBTQ plus flag above Battle Creek City Hall throughout the month of July. In witness and there whereof we have here to um, Set the set our hand and cause the official. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. So I'm it's getting a little bit small. <laughs> logo at City Hall, Battle Creek, Michigan, to be um, affixed uh, the second day of July, 2024. Signed by Mark Binky. Mayor and Roger Ballard, Commissioner, Ward 1. Thank you to both of you and to the entire commission for recognizing us and for the entire city, honestly, for presenting us with this proclamation 
and um, just recognizing that we have value and that we are seen in this city and it just really means a lot to us, so thank you. And I would just like to say thank you for this to the city, uh, for Lila Arboretum where our uh, festival will take place. Um, it's also the place that Jim and I uh, were married um, nine years ago as it became legal in the United, United States. <laughs> What's that? 2015, yeah, nine years ago. <laughs> and uh, together since 2007. So thank you very much. I would just like to take a minute to thank everyone who is here tonight and to remember one individual that I built a relationship with. Um, through the last three or four years, I first met this person at the dog park. Um, I was asked to be there at their grand opening, and we never made it inside the gate because um, Matt and his uh, friend, um, we chatted about Battle Creek and what we need to do to improve Battle Creek, and he finally got into uh, telling me about the number of cars that he had, uh, but he passed away this past February. And if we all could live our life like Matt Downing does, um, Battle Creek would be a great place. I mean, I think him and his partner own a couple of houses on Rose Street, and they literally take care of the entire neighborhood. So, um, thinking of him today, and I just want to thank everyone who participated and supports um, everything that you guys stand for and everything you do in Battle Creek. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you for saying those words about Matt. And he is actually going to be our honorary grand marshal in our parade this year. And he will be represented by his husband, Carrie. They did marry shortly before Matt passed. And you're right, Mayor. He is definitely one to follow. And he is definitely one to model your behavior after. He was pretty great. And we lost a really great person. So. Next item on our agenda is the BCU annual presentation by... Mayor, can I just say something? We are having no audio on our YouTube channel, so if you're out there watching on YouTube, I'm very sorry. We, we, we don't know when we're trying to troubleshoot, um, but I believe that the Access Vision is doing... We don't have any sound either. No sound at all. So I apologize, but we'll make sure that we'll um, address what we can. They're putting announcement on YouTube as well. Welcome, Joe Soborowski. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Welcome. I'll try to be brief. I know I've got 10 minutes. Um, but uh, first of all, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, it's a pleasure to be here to give, us our, to give you our annual report. I'd be remiss to not uh, point out some team members back here. We've got Heather Nash, Bridget Jones, uh, Robert Quarter, and I actually have uh, Chairman Eric Stewart here of the BCU Board, I think on other business as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of breeze through this. I'm going to go fast because uh, there's a lot to go over. Um, but as always, we're an open book. If anybody wants to talk offline or talk with us one-on-one -on -one about anything that you see here or other things, please feel free to reach out. Um, I always like to start with where we're at in Calhoun County and Battle Creek is part of Calhoun County where our, our unemployment rate is compared to our peers in Kalamazoo County in Michigan and U.S. We, we always are a little bit higher on our unemployment rate. And on the labor participation rate, we're always trailing a little bit lower. So there's opportunity there. Uh, strategic plan, some of the things I'm going to talk about today are really the start of our six-year strategic plan, our seven-year strategic plan starting in 23, going to 2030. We're taking a longer look. Um, we still have some finalized tweaks before we want to make our metrics and our strategic plan official. So um, our commitment by 2030 is three quarters of a billion in capital investment, 400 new jobs, 
um, above the state average wage uh, in this region, which is currently at 21 and some change, and that's going to move on an annual basis, so that's how we'll track it. We'll track it along with the MEDC. Um, and we want to have 600 wage positive jobs impacted. Um, we're still working on some of that language. What we need to get comfortable as with the community is we need to embrace technology and higher wage jobs with automation. And so that's some of the things that we tried to weave in here as well. Um, our goals by 2030, we need housing. Everybody knows that. Um, we, we hope that BCU can be a pivotal part in that with uh, the city of Battle Creek and others to lean in heavily. But we want to have a, uh, a 1,000 new housing units. These are things that BCU is going to do to actually induce that. Uh, hopefully, we have 2,000 units, and there's other groups that are bringing housing on board. Um, but this is kind of how we're grading ourselves. Uh, 750 new uh, capital investment, 1,000 jobs impacted, 20 placemaking projects, 20 companies attracted, with 12 related to community development. You'll see a lot of community development weaved in here. Um, socioeconomic development projects, you know, that's transportation, childcare, participation in some of those things and how they weave into economic development. Um, 10 diff loans and 5 million in private capital, operational capital. Um, again, 60-40 split. We really are making a push into community development. I think you can see that with some of the things we're doing downtown. Um, and really 40% uh, on the primary job creation, really narrowing our focus to the airport and drones. We're a food and beverage community and energy. Energy storage has got automotive in there as well, but just really narrowing our focus. Um, these are our goals. I know this is small, but this is, these are kind of the metrics that we're tracking ourselves over the last year. Um, so we already got 104 housing units with Hollander going in the Kmart uh, facility or the old former Kmart lot. $152 million in capital investment. That number is probably slightly low and we'll probably adjust when we get final numbers, but it was a pretty good year between those companies. And as you can see, these are the companies that make up the jobs. So if you saw a total of 60, really we're going to net that to what the regional wage is and we're going to track that. So of the 60, there technically could be 40 in there that we're going to track as part of our new jobs created. Um, and then the 170 jobs, that's the, the, that's the Kellogg uh, uh, plant or the WK Kellogg plant now. That's kind of one of the things we're talking about is having these investments that are going to uh, maintain those jobs through through automation and, and, and plant improvement. 20 placemaking projects, we've already got three. Uh, 20, comp 20 companies attracted, we already got two. Um, one diff loan and uh, one socioeconomic project, you'll see the uproot market and eatery. Um, this is just kind of a snapshot uh, of all those projects. Um, in, a, in a slide, um, we didn't have Grand Valley on there for a specific, specific reason. It kind of came late, um, but uh, that's in there as well. And then we just kind of give a detail of, of each project. So the WK Kellogg Co., which you as the city commission played a vital role in, in helping keep that plant vibrant here in Battle Creek and setting it up for future growth. I would say across the state, uh, collectively between BCU, the city of Battle Creek, and the many stakeholders, um, we pulled a coup. Like People were going, how did you guys pull that off? How did you get that incentive? It was one of the last ones that the state had. I think they were holding it for a battery plant that, that fell through. So the timing and the stars aligned perfectly. And I uh, can't thank you all for, for, for that vote and, and what that meant for the community. I'm really proud about this one. Um, if you see at the bottom, what we're going to try to do on the ribbons are the, are the, the, uh, the two highlighted things are the two areas in our strategic plan that that project meets at that time. And we're doing that for a reason, because you'll kind of see some of this stuff. Denso, $63 million. Again, heavy investment, probably into equipment and automation. We should be supporting that. Uh, higher wage jobs. Uh, industrial partners. Like, this is one that started. This is the spec building. It started with capital investment of $20 million. Next year, this could show up where we might have jobs or something else attached to it um, as we're keeping track of this. Um, Uproot. Uh, Restore 269 and Uproot, if you look at the ribbon at the bottom, that's why we're talking about community development. Look at all the things that that hits. That hits housing, capital investment, jobs, placemaking, companies attracted. It's got a diff loan on it as well, as well as it's got some socioeconomic impacts on it. So these are the things that we want to do more of and, move, and we think will move the needle in Battle Creek. Uh, United Federal Credit Union is another one. They're going into the Milton. Um, this, is a, this is a good one. Uh, I know it seems kind of small, but this is a credit union entering the market that has been aggressive on partnering with us 
to do the hotel loan, they refinanced the Milton, they did some of the uproot market stuff, uh, so a good partner. Um, again, Mish Air, this one's just capital investment. We were su successful in receiving uh, dollars from the state uh, to begin what we're calling Mish Air. Uh, this is drones at the WK Kellogg Airport or the Executive Airport. Um, we want to create the centerpiece or the hub for the state based out of Battle Creek. So we're, I would say we're still crawling right now. We've got our, we've got our, our professional service providers engaged and they're doing their work behind the scenes. Um, and we hope this is, this is not going to be a sprint, this is going to be a marathon, it's going to take several years, but we're really emulating what they did in, in North Dakota and we're working with those partners as well that have created a successful drone park in North Dakota. So high paying jobs, lots of potential at the airport, I, I could go on and on and on, but I think we all kind of know what that airport provides in our future in economic development. Uh, Grand Valley State University. Uh, I know we worked with the city uh, and, uh, and others, and we took ownership of this facility, the Kendall Center, and then Grand Valley has been working closely with uh, uh, um, the Kellogg Foundation, and we're going to continue to own the facility, uh, but they are going to take the first floor, and they're going to invest uh, nearly $7 million into their first outreach center. Now, we hope this grows into the other floors when we talk about food reimagined and creating kind of an incubation space. All of that's kind of on the table here. Grand Valley's kind of the... the our hopes are the first stage, and they're going to work some, uh, some food into their, their plans as well. Food Reimagined, again, uh, $3.3 3 million grant from the MEDC. Um, this is taking the Food Reimagined idea that's been talked about for years, and I would say we're not crawling anymore. We're probably standing up and starting to walk, and uh, we're a food town. And the, the idea behind this is to is to take uh, food entrepreneurs and, and embrace, th embrace them and, and all the assets that we have here, hopefully grow them into something that's creating jobs and investment in Battle Creek. Uh, community development, I'm gonna just touch on this briefly because we've talked about it for several years. It's not part of our metrics, but we threw it in here. The hotel will be open this August. Um, I'm excited for what this is gonna mean for the community, the downtown. Um, You've got companies looking to book 200 room nights for three or four nights in a row. Um, there's a lot of stuff like that that are, that are starting to percolate. So this is gonna be very good for our community to get that disposable income yeah. out into the rest of the downtown. <clears throat> um, the River Re Re Naturalization Project, and I think I got uh, roughly one minute here. Uh, the River Naturalization Project, this is again in its infancy, but um, Battle Creek Unlimited this last year, uh, or two years ago received a $13 million appropriation. We hired a urban planner who's working closely with Ted and the city, and this is a joint effort. Um, you'll start to see graphic packaging come down um, on the 17th of this month, so um, the things are really starting to accelerate there. Um, the housing development, the Hollander housing development, we took Kmart down, we held the site for housing, now it's coming to fruition. We're gonna, we're gonna start to see some housing there. Um, downtown building acquisitions, we're built, we don't want to be the largest landholder in Battle Creek, but we're, we're strategically taking properties, buying them, getting them to a state to where developers can start to pencil things out. Um, it's a good strategy and other communities are starting to pay attention and do it themselves. Um, again, the BC tr train program, um, we've, got, we've had 96 inquiries to date, 25 awards. Um, this is homeowner down payment assistance for moving into the city of Battle Creek. And other initiatives, we did an HRNA housing plan, which I think you are all privy to that. We did a Deloitte EV supply chain study, which we'll be relying on. And we did a Disher automation study when I talked about embracing automation, higher, paid, higher paying jobs, et cetera. Um, just some other initiatives, the roundabout at Skyline Drive went in. Um, it's gonna be phenomenal for the industrial park and the 110th. Um, and our direct investment funds. We've got several outstanding loans, so we're busy. Um, grants, grants received, 10, over 10 million received. We've leveraged nearly 12 million others and we've awarded about 154,000. Um, and just to end it there, I know I got some of my team members there, but we're winning awards and we couldn't do it without the city of Battle Creek with you all, but we really are punching above our weight as far as a community of this size and this economic development organization. And sometimes we gotta take a reflect back. Um, we received the Matt Conway Award. There was only 20 organizations 
of any size across the nation that received that. So we couldn't do that without you all, couldn't do it without our team, couldn't do it without our board of directors, and we got some good momentum going on in Battle Creek. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Any questions of our economic developer? Not seeing any, Joe, but right. I want to say thank you very much. I know your entire team, including your chairperson, work overtime. Yep. Um, you've had some tough board meetings, but I tell you what, um, I'm proud of everything that you guys are doing, and I think as a community, um, anytime we have a young entrepreneur like yourself willing to take on some of the tough battles and work with some of the community partners that we have, like the Kellogg Foundation, you produce results. So yeah, thank you. Congratulations, and tell your staff. Congratulations. I'm going to turn over to our city manager, Rebecca Flurry, who will introduce our next present presenter. Oh, thanks, Mayor. Um, I get to present uh, Rod Otten. He is the new manager for Calhoun County C Senior Services, and he's going to share a little bit about senior services. Come on up, Rod. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you tonight, provide a brief update on senior services, which is the senior millage for Calhoun County. and. Uh, I'm delighted to be in the role that I'm in now, uh, which has been for just over seven months. I also want to recognize uh, my predecessor, Helen Guzzo, who provided great leadership uh, for uh, Calhoun County Senior Services for many years and put us in a good position. So thank you, Helen, for all that you, you did. <clears throat> Excuse me, just a reminder of why we exist. The millage was, uh, was approved over 20 years ago. And uh, the intent, again, was to support older adults in Calhoun County and their caregivers. And uh, with the goal primarily being to support them uh, in, as they age, uh, to be able to support them in staying at home and staying independent. And so over the last 20 plus years, that's what our primary focus has been in working with all the providers that we fund to provide the services that older adults need in the county. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, we try to live by our mission, vision, and, uh, and do that day in and day out. We have staff who are also committed as well to do that. And um, this was handed to me and I'm trying to figure out how to use it. <laughs> so forgive me. Okay. Thank you, appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for if you're not familiar, we like to remind uh, community members, what the <clears throat> what the senior millage uh, funds? Uh, again, we fund over uh, we fund 19 different services uh, through uh, nine over 19 programs through nine different uh, organizations. Um, if we could get the next slide, there we go. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, we, I shared the history a little bit with you. And uh, our primarily, our, our funds go through contractual spending that uh, we fund year in and year out, based again on the needs of the community. Some of those areas, primary areas are transportation, food, uh, minor home repair, again, trying to support older adults who need help in staying in their home. If I could have the next slide, please. We have a brochure, which I brought some, but we have them throughout the county. We want to make them available to residents just to make sure they're informed as to the services not only that we provide, but the organizations that provide those services. Six of those nine organizations, um, <clears throat> excuse me, are in Battle Creek. And so we spend a lot of time in Battle Creek meeting with our partners to ensure that our older adults uh, that we're serving in the county are, are being served in a good way. And next, <clears throat> as you can see by the numbers, which continue to trend up, which is a good thing, we continue to be able to support more and more older adults in the county. This past year in 2023, we served just under 7,000 older adults and, uh, and their caregivers. We wanna make sure we recognize caregivers that also provide tremendous support to older adults in the county. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just wanna highlight very briefly our core values again, and uh, again, what we truly uh, focus on in serving older adults. In addition to funding, one of our uh, major roles that we play is bringing people together. As we identify uh, problems and challenges in the county around older adults and caregivers, one of our roles is to bring folks together and organizations together to uh, provide solutions. And so I wanted to provide some highlights with that. If, 
<clears throat> I think that, is that the last slide? Yes. All right. Just some highlights as to, um, again, our core values and how we try to practice them day in and day out. Um, I'm happy to report, and I did provide you a copy of our 2023 annual report, uh, which is at, uh, in print right now and will be available to the general public here in the next week to 10 days. So we're delighted by that. We're proud, again, uh, of all the work that was done by our providers you, uh, through Senior Millage Funding last year, and uh, you have that in front of you. Additionally, I mentioned the number of people served, um, and that does not always include all the number of phone calls that we take. We have great staff that work with us that take calls every day, supporting older adults and caregivers in need of services, and we do appreciate them for that. The specific programs that we provide funding to for these services that are located in Battle Creek include CareWell, Community Action, Guardian Finance and Advocacy Services, Legal Services South Central Michigan, Marion Birch Adult Daycare Center, and Senior Health Partners. Additionally, every year we provide and put on uh, at the Kellogg Center the uh, Senior Expo, which we just did in May. Uh, had a great turnout as, we, uh, as that continues to grow as well. Had over 650 older adults uh, who came to the event. We had over 120 different vendors and uh, really provided a good experience for older adults with lots of helpful information to them going out. Uh, that's again uh, continuing to be a great uh, event that, uh, that uh, we look forward to. A nice thing to see, we have great Battle Creek participation, but we're having more and more um, uh, folks from Albion, Marshall, out county, or out city uh, uh, supporting the uh, expo as well. Additionally, this year for the first time, one of the things that we're providing more focus on is the problem that we have around food insecurity for older adults. We know that food insecurity is a general problem, especially experienced by low-income residents in the county. We paid special focus to older adults experiencing food insecure. We put together a summit that we had in May, and that summit, the audience was food providers in the county, food, food pantries, food distribution places, as well as nutrition educators. And again, the whole idea is we've got to continue to focus on how do we collaborate, coordinate, communicate in support of older adults who are experiencing food insecurity. And so um, uh, as it relates to that, we're going to continue to take a lead role in uh, working with uh, provider organizations and volunteer organizations in the uh, county who are in support of uh, addressing food insecurity. Just a couple of the quick things here. Another, again, concern that we have, that all of us have, is the number of older adults experiencing who are unsheltered. Uh, at present, we have over 100 older adults, 60 plus, who are unsheltered in Cowan County. And so we put together, Senior Services put together a work group to begin providing focus, specific focus on the 60 plus um, uh, older adults experiencing uh, being unsheltered, as well as those who are at risk of becoming unsheltered. So we're continuing to provide focus to this, uh, working with all the providers in the county who support uh, this particular population and to, again, make sure that we're focused on supporting that, uh, the 60 plus population. Uh, two final things. Uh, we currently fund and support two senior centers in the county, uh, the, uh, the um, Fork Senior Center in Albion, Heritage Commons in Marshall. We are working now, we've developed another work group at the Cool Center to again, strengthen the programming at the Cool Center for Senior Center Programming. And we had a big event last week uh, to get input from residents in the community to make sure we understand what they want. And so we had uh, close to 200 responses. Uh, we're delighted and we uh, continue, uh, we plan to continue to work with this group, uh, work group to strengthen the services are being provided through Cool Center for uh, senior center activities and plan to fund that uh, beginning later this year. Finally, I uh, want to highlight one, an exciting program that was started through Helen's leadership uh, called Senior Ambassadors. Uh, we, uh, and this is uh, recruiting older adults in the county to serve as senior ambassadors on behalf of senior services to ensure that older adults in the county know about all the services that are available to them. And we're, uh, we want to build off what currently exists, have, have more senior ambassadors throughout the county, and ensure that older adults are continuing to find out and understand the programs available to them. I appreciate you giving me the time to talk with you tonight. Thank you very much. Any questions of Rob? Yes, Commissioner 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no question, just a comment. You know, we raise all sorts of money in this community, um, and it's spent with varying levels of efficiency. But I would just like to say that in regard to uh, senior service specifically, there's no better conduit, in my experience, for identifying an issue and deploying a solution, sometimes within a matter of days, uh, I've been witness to. And I just want to thank you, Rod. Thank you, of course, Helen. Couldn't, couldn't leave Helen out of this. Um, thank you for coming today, and just keep up the great work. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, Commissioner. Any other? Commissioner Patrick O'Donnell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Rod, I just had a, it is interesting, these numbers, how it grew by 1,000 between 2021 and 2022. Is that due to the fact of the ambassador program getting more word out, or was there some type of um, factor? Because most of the time, it's, it's grown like 300 per year, and that was just a big uh, gain of uh, services. I just wondered how, what happened. Uh, it, it's a great question, and um, Helen, I would uh, help. <laughs> Since I wasn't uh, in this role at that time, I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I just wondered if. Yeah, what what kind of growth are you looking at this year? Because it was about the same, another three hundred or. Uh, well, again, we anticipate it continuing to grow not only because of the, our providers uh, are continuing to do a better job in terms of uh, reaching out and uh, uh, the, the, the residents in the community know more and more about the program. Uh, so that's really important. And then the, our senior ambassadors doing things like this where, you know, we, we market some, but what we're really uh, learning is that it's the word of mouth. It's the making sure that we're out in the community, whether it be through our senior ambassadors, through our senior millage allocation committee members, et cetera, that we're really doing a better job uh, making sure that we're, uh, you know, letting residents know. Oh, thank you very much for all you do. I'm glad we can get these services out to the people that need it. So thanks. Thank you, Rod. We appreciate your being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next time on our agenda is Mayor, Chair, no, excuse me. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are not able to correct the audio issue at this time because it will require a reboot of the computer, but we're gonna try to reassemble the video with the audio that the clerk takes at each meeting, so we will continue to video, but there'll be no audio tonight. Okay. All right, next item on our agenda is Chair noting any added or deleted resolutions. There were none. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Next item on our agenda is petitions, communications, and reports. There were none. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is introduction of ordinance 10-2024. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. Westbrook Place Apartments is a 60-story mid-high rise building with 69 units of multifamily affordable residential housing for persons who are age 50 and over. Original, originally constructed as a hospital in 1940, the property underwent extensive renovation and conversion in 2006. It is currently used as an elderly designated affordable rental apartment complex subject to restricted rents and regulations under Section 42 of the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. The current pilot originally provides an annual, percent, or annual service payment of 4% of contract rents. The developer is requesting that the pilot remain at the same 4%. The current pilot, pilot is set to expire at the end of 2024. On December 31st, 20, or excuse me, December 23rd, 2021, the property was sold and is now owned by Westbrook Preservation Limited D Dividend Housing Association, LLC, with Full Circle Communities as a project developer. FCC is requesting a renewal of the pilot reflected here in an ordinance amendment showing the new owner as the sponsor and to provide a renewal of the length of the pilot as the owner developers seek to apply for additional funds to rehabilitate the property. FCC indicates that centra central to its mission is the recognition that housing, supportive services, and social services are interconnected. As a result, FCC dedicates at least 75% of cash flow and developer fees to providing services for residents. This service-rich housing model promotes stability, independence, and serves as the foundation for opportunity and enrichment. FCC further indicates that Westbrook Place cannot be preserved without an extension of the existing pilot. An extension is also necessary to prepare the property for a competitive LIHTC application to receive an allocated allocation to perform necessary maintenance and repairs. The proposed ordinance has also been amended to better reflect the template ordinance recommended by MISHTA 
and to extend the terms that would otherwise expire at the end of 2024. The proposed ordinance introduction, number 10, 2024, would amend section eight of chapter 882, real estate taxation, by amending the terms of the payment in lieu of taxes to reflect the new ownership and financing for Westbrook Place. Thank you. I move for the introduction of ordinance 10-2024. Support. I moved and supported to introduce ordinance 10-2024. If you'd like to make public comment on these ordinances, introductions, then please raise your hand and wait for us to call upon you and come forward to the podium. You'll have three minutes to make your comment. Please state your name and address while making the comment. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Christian Uxie. Um My address is 6547 South Knox, Chicago, Illinois, uh, and I'm representing uh, Full Circle Communities. Uh, we're an affordable housing, uh, nonprofit affordable housing developer, uh, and we have properties in Illinois, Iowa, and Michigan. Uh, we uh, try to expand uh, affordable housing for different populations, and we do that by preservation and uh, new construction projects. Uh, our, like it was mentioned, uh, central to our, um, our business model is um, putting 75% of our finances, uh, developer fee and cash flow to support services to our, our residents. Uh, and uh, we acquired Westbrook Place Apartments in 2021. Uh, and uh, we are seeking uh, the extension. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so uh, again, I, thanks for, for being here. I wanted to uh, kind of show up, you know, so you guys can get to know who the, the owner of the building is. Uh, and we're r really excited to be able to like um, renovate the units for our seniors and hopefully, you know, provide like affordable housing for them for the next 40 years. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you're probably one of the first um, applicants for a pilot that have shown up. So I want to thank you and welcome you to Battle Creek. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Any other public comments at this time? Yes, John. Just a couple of quick questions. My name is John Kennefick, 234 South Avenue. And it says payment in lieu of taxes. And apparently, according to the presentation, it's probably coming into disrepair, so some serious money of 75% plus maybe tax abatements come in to this procedure. Now, it's for affordable housing for 40 years. I kind of think that's a strange, odd thing for 40 years. Who can contain the costs of property taxes and things of that nature? Furthermore, what happens when um, the affordable housing, is it subsidized housing? Are they going to be paying $400 and subsidized by the state or federal government of $600? It's a pretty good deal to have a place that falls into disrepair and then have the taxpayer from different levels of government bail it out. I have no problem with affordable housing, but this doesn't sound like affordable housing. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments at this time? Yes. Mr. Adam. Barry Wayne Adams, 622 West Green Street in Marshall. Uh, when I see these kind of operations uh, where, you know, you have an established ordinance and then in order to be able to keep some sort of system working, you have to find exemptions and get arounds and stuff like that. You really don't have a, a system of law. It's really lawlessness. And, uh, you know, if anything happens, all you got to do is come down here and, and beg for an exemption. But uh, these kind of exemption giving is essentially a, a form of giving credit uh, for the benefit of a, of a private entity. And uh, that kind of activity is prohibited by uh, Article 9, Section 18 of the Michigan Constitution, 
which says the credit of the state shall not be granted to nor in aid of any person, association, or corporation, public or private, except as authorized in this Constitution. And what appears to be applicable here, Kaplan versus City of Huntington Woods, a gift or donation of money or property by the city would constitute a violation of constitutional provisions forbidding the credit of state to be granted in aid of any person, association, or corporation and forbidding any city or village to loan its credit or to assess, levy, or collect any tax for other than a public purpose. So, just as we saw with the Disneyland tour of corporate fascism that we just saw in the little presentation a little while ago, uh, the bright line between public and private activity is, is becoming blurred and uh, in doing so, then that mutates the government into something other than the constitutional republic. And in, in fact, it's corporate fascism. And whether it's the gazelle shaft of Germany or the syndicados of fascist Italy or the municipal corporations of the United States, it's the same thing. Just because it's American doesn't make it good. You know, we're not supposed to be controlled by corporate forms. We're supposed to be in a democracy. Corporations are, by their very nature, anti-democratic. We're supposed to be in a constitutional republic which has representative democracy. So, I don't think it's the purpose, and it's upholding the Constitution to degenerate the functions of government into a matrix of corporate forms. You're done. I'll be back. Thank you. Are there any other public comments at this time? Yes. Hi, my name is Helen Guzzo and I live at 125 Sterling Court and as you know, I was the exec, or I was the manager of Cowan County Senior Services, and in that role, I spent a lot of time at Restbook Place, um, helping deliver commodities once a month. Um, some of our lowest income residents live there. It's a great reuse of community hospital. I had my firstborn child there 27 or 25 years ago, and we as a community took an abandoned building, our hospital, and we recreated housing for our lowest income seniors. It is a very successful program. It's housed. I know the roof leaks. Hopefully that's been fixed, but I, uh, I just want to say that um, Restbrook Place <coughs> serves older adults with dignity. People pay 30% of their income in rent. And um, it, it's a, it's a um, community asset. So, thank you, thank Helen. you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, young man. Reese Atkins, 3600 West Michigan. I think that what they did to Westbrook is awesome. Um, back, uh, I'm going to say, probably about six years ago, me and a buddy of mine went in there and delivered the inquiry into the place. And I remember back when I was a little kid and had to go through therapy um, because of learning disability, that's where I did my learning disability. So to see a building like that, that at one time, yeah, it was a hospital, become what it is, it is awesome. I have been in several of the apartments inside Westbrook with uh, family and friends that, have, that live there and have lived there, and it is an awesome place, and I really like what they're doing with it, and I'm glad to see that somebody else has purchased it and has not just become another empty building because they've done an awesome job with the building. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, David Moore. Well, maybe a little slow on this, but give everybody a fair shake. I the taxpayers pays the bills and and don't seem sometimes get very much to say. I think a fair shake for everybody. I think the people who's paying the taxes should have a equal voice and be more included than they are. 
I gotta say, I'm a little slow on this, and <clears throat> hope I can learn a lot more about this, but you give a taxpayer and a low class people, if they're involved in this, getting a pat to put, put in a big part of it, they should have a little bit more to say about it than they, than they are. Thank you. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Any other public comments? Seeing none. Any commission comments? Seeing none, would you please vote on the introduction of Ordinance 10 2024? Introduction of Ordinance 10 2024 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is the proposed ordinance introduction of 11 2024. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. These proposed amendments to the city zoning code will clarify the intended use of its accessory dwellings and provide requirements for maximum height and setbacks. Remove the agritourism as a special use for the green and R1R as it does not align with the stated purpose of the districts and, amend, and amends the sign ordinance to better align with common signage locations for hotels while limiting the overall area of the sign to 200 square feet. This proposed ordinance introduction would amend zoning code for the city of Battle Creek as described. Thank you. I move for the uh, introduction of ordinance 11, 2024. Support. I moved and supported to approve the ordinance 11-2024. Are there any public comments at this time? Are there any public comments? Seeing none, any oh, commission got comments? One. Oh, I didn't see you. <laughs> uh, again, Barry Wayne Adams, 622 West Green Street. Uh, whenever you're talking zoning, uh, it's every American's obligation to ask the question, Quo oranto, by what authority? Zoning derives its authority from MCL 10.31, which deals with the governor's exercise of emergency powers. Uh, and not reading the whole statute, it does provide for quote unquote, designation of specific zones within the area in which occupancy and use of buildings and ingress and egress of persons and vehicles may be prohibited or regulated. So what's the constitutional provision for MCL 10.31? It's Article 5, Section 12. The governor shall be commander in chief of the armed forces and may call them out to execute the laws suppress insurrection and repel invasion. Uh, it is the exercise of military authority by which you are usurping individual property rights through, through zoning ordinances. And of course, you know, when you hear this stuff, the eyes start rolling up in the back of the head. And, uh, but uh, all these sorts of uh, abuses, overreaches of power uh, that emanate from the continuing uh, declaration of state of emergency, which is a euphemism for martial law, uh, which has never been rescinded or lifted, but you're continuing, continually hearing about the new state of emergency being declared. Uh, it's a legitimacy for creating this simulacrum of constitutional republic process. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the deception is so elaborate and sophisticated that even the participants themselves are unaware of what they're really doing. But this goes to something that is much greater in scale than is readily perceived within a city council chamber. This moves globally and uh, as things happen, uh, you should be aware as to why they happen. And this exercise of military authority is a component of what's going to be happening globally. So, you took Excuse me, Barry, are you speaking to our proposed ordinance 11 2024? I, I am speaking about the use of zoning ordinances. I just wanted to check. Okay. Thanks. 
I'll try to dumb it down better for you. Thank you. Your time is up. <laughs> Are there any other public comments at this time? Seeing none. Are there any commission comments? Commissioner Patrick O'Donnell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I definitely support the zoning changes. Um, there's so many different new things. I'm glad the uh, staff took the time to, a lot of time to get some of these out of there. Some of those highlighted is uh, helping with uh, green districts with um, allowing family uh, residential, like small farming in, your, in the area, uh, sign ordinances where the signs aren't protruding over top of roof lines are they're limited that way but the they i just like to say thank you for the time that they took to make sure that this is uh complying with other cities that are using the same type of uh, zoning ordinances for their signage and their uh, communities to have uh, growth in it so thank you thank you commissioner commissioner ballard no see hearing none would you uh, please vote on the proposed ordinance introduction of 11-2024 The introduction of proposed order, ordinance 11 2024 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is the proposed ordinance 12 2024. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. This chapter of ordinance was, ordinances was initially enacted in 1995 to set out what are called status offenses, those which are illegal based on upon the age of the violator. In this instance, youth and minors. The section related to tobacco and alcohol mirror the state law. Almost all sections of the chapter are proposed to be revised to either amend the definitions consistent with state law, to replace references to state law that have either been repealed or amended, and to, under, and to change to ungendered language consistent with the directive of the city commission when the charter was amended in March of 2020. This proposed ordinance, 12, 2024, would amend the chapter title as well as sections 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, and 99 of chapter 694, Youth Offenses, by making it consistent with state law, replacing outdated statutory references and ungendering language. I move for the ordinance and introduction of ordinance 12, 2024. Support. The movement is supported to introduce ordinance 12-2024. Are there any public comments at this time? Are there any public comments? Yes, Barry, Wayne, Adams. Now I ask that you speak specifically towards our ordinance, all right? I will. Uh, Barry Wayne Adams, 622 West Green Street. Uh, Excuse me, what city are you from? Marshall. Thank you. When you refer to a, a class of crimes as being status crimes uh, that are only applicable in uh, certain cases, as she gave the example of being of age to be able to do something or not do something. Uh, you move away from the constitutional groundwork of common law legislation. And uh, there are really uh, two categories of, of crime. Uh, those that can be called uh, malum in se, which are obviously uh, crimes in and of themselves, but there's also the other category, uh, malum prohibitum, that they are crimes only because uh, the state decides that they are wrong. And status crimes fall into that category. Now, it's interesting, you, you go down to Mexico, for example, uh, where they don't have these crimes, and I, you know, a nine-year-old can go in and buy a pack of cigarettes. I mean, it's not necessarily a good thing, but uh, you don't have the problem of the forbidden fruit syndrome, where you get into this nonsense cat and mouse dynamic where trying to catch kids buying cigarettes 
or booze. Uh, seems like law enforcement could be used on better uh, position towards better uses. So, uh, again, I'm just trying to point out the many different instances of how we have deviated from constitutional forms, uh, and it's uh, Article 2, Section 7 of the Michigan Constitution. The common law is supposed to control, uh, and it's parallel, actually, with the uh, teaching of Jesus and his criticism of the Pharisees and how they have deviated from the intent of the law by the compartmentalization and fragmentation and uh, hyper <coughs> particularization of criminality. Uh, and the same thing happens in, in the statutory, statutory legislation dynamic. You're done. Thank you. Are there any other public comments at this time? Yes, David. I'm kind of shooting in the dark again. Um, talking about 40, the conservatives seem to have the top good authority. These business have authority. They like having drugs and legalizing drugs and to their advantage to their revenue. I think that some of this sometimes it's you got too many committees, private committees. Sometimes these things should be brought out maybe to a public election and people decide a little bit more in what they're doing. And I think the people are still in the dark what's going on and think these People get involved and open these up to uh, public elections could be a equal advantage too. Thank you. Thank you, David. Any other public comments at this time? Seeing none, any commission comments? Seeing none, would you please vote on the introduction of Ordinance 12 2024? Ordinance 12-2024 has been introduced. Next item on our agenda is public comment regarding consent agenda and resolutions not on the consent agenda. If you'd like to make public comment regarding the consent agenda and resolutions not on the consent agenda, please raise your hand. We will call upon you to come forward to the podium. You'll have three minutes to make your comments. Please state your name and address before beginning your comment. Indicate which resolutions you're speaking to. Are there any public comments at this time? Back in the corner. Yes, sir. Barry, we'll have you next, all right? Speaking in Resolution uh, 490. Um, personally, I'm disappointed with Calum, Go Calum County government leaders as a whole for the secrecy behind the Blue Oval Park project that is being built between Emmett Township and Marshall. The majority of the Battle Creek Commission, all Marshall Township board members, all Marshall City government leaders, and more recently discovered the supervisor of Emmett Township, have all signed NDAs with entities of whom are involved with the Blue Oval Park project. I'm just going to ask some questions. How many hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of gallons of water are going to flow through these pipes daily? Have any studies been done as to how this agreement will affect the Battle Creek City water supply in the future? Have any environmental impact studies been done in regard to this project? Has the Board of Emmett Township voted on the contract agreement with Battle Creek that is spoken of in this um, resolution? Why so many secrets? Why sign the NDAs in regard to Blue Oval Park? Will residents of Battle Creek, Emmett Township, Marshall, Calhoun County ever know all of the details of Blue Oval Park, as well as any and all contract agreements made between the city and participating parties? I sadly suspect the answer is no. So thank you. Sir, can we get your name, please? Joe Harris, Battle Creek. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? So, Barry, I said it's going to go to you next. I 
again, Barry Wayne Adams, 622 West Green Street. Uh, resolution 490, speaking with specificity. Uh, a memorandum of understanding, which is kind of like a, a red carpet contract, which you uh, try to pre-purchase uh, uh, opportunities to do something down the line. For the water, uh, producing water infrastructure for the uh, what will not come to fruition mega site, the mega mess. Uh, everything about this cannot be more of, a, of an example of gangsterism uh, operating under color of law. You've got uh, <coughs> Meta coming in, already fraught with all kinds of underlying fraud. Again, the connection between MEDEC and Meta is nothing more than a money laundering and land acquisition operation designed to get around that uh, Article 9, Section 18 provision of the Michigan Constitution. Uh, all those land transfer contracts were essentially coercive, uh, even though the people profess, you know, on the MEDA side, the people profess that they were totally voluntary. But go on to YouTube, you can find out that they weren't. The people, uh, buyer's remorse, they talk about how they were bullied into it. When the state comes in, when somebody comes in and says, the state wants your land, and if you don't sell it, uh, everybody else is, you're coerced into, into a contract. But uh, the whole idea of selling or buying the rights from Meta, which are like, you know, <laughs> the white man's rights from the Native Americans, uh, for one dollar uh, suggests that the, the whole operation could not even stay afloat without these kind of shaky business dealings. Uh, and it suggests that there have been serious pre-planning before any of this was made public. And as Joseph spoke before, uh, the NDAs, uh, the conflicts of interest, uh, and, you know, I brought, I brought this stuff up to the uh, Michigan State Police. This has been put, put forth in a uh, criminal complaint. Uh, to the Michigan State Police, which has been moved from the Lansing Post up to the 5th Division Headquarters, Special Investigation Division, and then it got moved up to the Lansing Post, and the uh, Attorney General's Office has been called in to assist on this. So these things are being looked at from a criminality perspective. Thank you for your comment. Yes, Autumn Smith. Good evening, Autumn Smith, Battle Creek. I too am speaking on 490. Um, I've been up here speaking already about the NDAs and I just wanna give you a little legal jargon to back up and support my speaking. You may want to look into US versus Tweel, which is a case that was brought with IRS tax agents and stuff, but the conclusion, the Supreme Court came to a conclusion that um, when there is a public duty to disclose, silence can be equated with fraud. So operating in the shadows behind NDAs and not being open and honest, the Supreme Court frowns upon that and looks at it as fraud. Um, also, another legal case that um, you may want to consider is um, one where the conclusion was what the government cannot do directly, it cannot do indirectly. And I think that's what you guys are trying to do by going around the citizens, not taking things to a public vote. This is our public municipal water supply and you guys are playing with it like a poker chip, giving rights away, letting other people uh, get get rights to it, letting other people, you know, for a dollar. We're gonna be providing over 750,000 gallons minimum per day to the battery plant. And as I've spoken before, 
There's no argument. It's not even up for debate. It's communist China. It's CCP. And you can say it's Ford. You could say it's, you know, MEDC. You can, you can flip it any which way that you want. If that was true, we wouldn't have the select committee on China looking into it. We wouldn't have Representative John Molinar. We wouldn't have letters being written to directors of Homeland Security. And it seems like you guys would value your community, citizens, <coughs> water resources and such a little bit more than selling out rights for a dollar and giving our municipal water supply to the Communist Chinese Party. Also, I don't know, I know you can't talk to me and stuff like that, but Remember, like, I don't know, it was about eight or ten years ago, I covered a story about the city man assistant city manager and former mayor going to China. They happened to sign some sort of agreement with the People's Republic of China, who is a direct arm of the CCP, and they claimed that money was exchanged. I'd be really interested in uh, any updates on that. They supposedly sold three elementary schools to them and all that, and I'm just wondering, you know, we got to worry about that now in our backyard? Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Are there any other public comments at this time? Riverside. Seeing none, yes. Good evening, Reese Atkins, 3600 West Michigan. I am speaking on resolution 491, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign a, the attached law enforcement mutual aid agreement with the city of Kalamazoo. I frown on this big time. We have our police department right here, the city of Battle Creek Police Department that does an excellent job. Why do we have to sign an agreement with another police department which is 30 minutes or more away for backup or for help or anything like that because our police department does an excellent job and I don't believe that we need any backup or agreements from Kalamazoo or anybody like that because Battle Creek does such an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, John, I think you had your hand up. John Kennevick, um, 234 South Avenue. The number of the resolution is 840, excuse me, 487. And I'm talking about because this resolution is going to transfer from the public treasury $201,000 to the consult, consultation services authority of Calhoun County. Now, a number of years ago, um, I did a research on many, many different transportation systems. Flint was one of them. They made about four or $6,000 in one year, but it cost them about $46,000 to be equitable, to be even. They went red ink for about $42 million. The next year they had an increase by $2 million. It went up from four to six, but their operating expense went up to $50,000. So you're still at about $44 million of federal dollars going into the ground that are all red ink that are failures. Now, did any of this commission ever bother to look at the financial statements of the Calhoun County land, excuse me, the Calhoun County, so I apologize, I'm gonna be a Biden moment. Um, did you ever look into the Calhoun County transit system to see what they've paid for and how they've operated over the last 10 years? That would give you an idea if it's a worthwhile thing. But if you're paying money of $201,000, and you're running yourself into the ground, you're just wasting money. And that money can go somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you, John. Any other public comments at this time? Seeing none, any commission comments? Um, commission comment regarding meeting business? I move for the approval of our consent agenda. Support. So moved and supported to approve the consent agenda. Is there any comments by the commission? Seeing none, would you please vote on the consent agenda? The consent agenda has been approved.
Next item on our agenda is Resolution 486. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. Section 6 of City Manager Fleury's employment contract provides that she will be evaluated biannually on specific criteria developed jointly and approved by the City Commission and Ms. Fleury. This will be communicated to her at the beginning of the evaluation period. At the CMPE meeting on June 17, 2024, City Manager Fleury shared the most recent updates from staff regarding work plan progress. At the meeting, the CMPE determined that the 2024-2025 was ready to be presented to the entire commission for adoption. This resolution identifies the 2024-2025 work plan and measures of success for City Manager Rebecca Fleury's evaluation criteria. Move for the approval of Resolution 486. Support. Been moved and supported to approve Resolution 486. Are there any comments by the commission? Seeing none, would you please vote on Resolution 486. Resolution 486 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is Resol Resolution 487. When you're ready. The Transportation Authority of Calhoun County, TAC, was established in 2023 and it includes within its boundaries the city of Albion, Battle Creek, Marshall, and Springfield. In order to facilitate this work, the TAC is seeking a consultant to create a framework for the authority's operation, including governing roles and responsibilities and policies and procedures, and assist the TAC with educational materials, budget development, and other activities as needed to form a, and sustain a fully functioning transit authority. An RFP was issued on April 5th, 2024, seeking proposals from qualified vendors. We received one proposal from Michigan Transportation Connection, Inc., who has the experience the TAC requires and has been approved by the TAC. The TAC will, excuse me, will work directly, the TAC will direct work with, to be done on time and materials basis with an out-to-exceed amount of $201,000. There are no restrictions on accepting a single bid from, with federal money. The consultant's serves, services will be paid for by the funds set aside for each of the participating jurisdictions at the time the TAC was formed. Calhoun County has also committed funds for the work. The city has agreed to hold the contract on behalf of the contributing partners, the city's contribution being funded by the American Rescue Plan Act dollars. This resolution seeks acceptance of the proposal of best value from Michigan Transportation Connection, Inc. to provide consultant services to the Transportation Authority of Calhoun County in a not to exceed amount of $201,000. Move for the approval of Resolution 487. Support. So we moved and supported to approve Resolution 487. Are there any comments by the commission? Commissioner Smith and Commissioner Simmons. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to say that I'm of the opinion that now that the TAC board has been seated and they have all the um, rights and authorities vested in such that body, or the body such as it is, um, we should stop cutting checks to them. Uh, they're going to probably seek a millage, and that should be the source of their revenue. Um, and with that, those are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Commissioner Simmons? So my question was kind of along the same line. Why? we're uh, administering this contract um, rather than the TAC. Now, I was glad to see the supporting documents, and I think the clerk mentioned it, uh, about how that's broken down. Only $100,000 of this is coming from the city, and glad to see that's not coming from our general funds. We're using ARP, ARPA money for that. So I guess I, I was interested in a little bit more detail uh, about, well, first, again, the question, why are we administering the contract and not the TAC, instead of us approving $100,000 to give them to execute their own contract. And then second, the nature of the, uh, the consultancy. I know, um, or it seems like my understanding was uh, a portion of this would be used for marketing of potential millage that we don't know about yet. Can, can you clarify that, please? I can try, but I'm probably not the best one because I see okay. Eric Stewart in the audience. He's the chair of the TAC. 
So maybe he could enlighten us on some of those conversations. I think the city is holding it um, because we have, I mean, we agreed even before the TAC was formed that each jurisdiction would participate in the consultant when it was time and when the TAC could approve. Um, so, and, you know, we, we had the procurement system with the ARPA dollars set up appropriately. That's the thing. We had very strict guidelines around procurement when using ARPA dollars. And since we were using ARPA dollars, it made it easier for us to hold that contract to be sure that we're following all those procedures from ARPA. From ARPA. Okay. Effective. Thank you for that clarification. And that may seem <coughs> equitable as far as population, and, and we're paying about, about half of that. And Mr. Stewart, you're welcome to come forward. Um, and, it, and maybe answer the question about what exactly is the nature of this contract. I, I understand, as the clerk mentioned, that some of the, the funds are, are helping set up the TAC and their operations, but is a portion of this uh, for marketing for a potential millage? <clears throat> no. Okay. So you, had, you had two portions. Okay. Uh, one is for marketing and um, what have you, but this one's for the consultant in terms of getting the setup of the of the tack, the direction, the budget, okay. the the experience, and things of that nature for the work itself. So, is the so, marketing coming separately then? Yes. If if we get to the point where they're going to propose a millage, then that would come uh, at a later date. The marketing was under a separate contract, which is similar to the funding that was collected. Okay. Have, have we already approved that, or maybe I missed that? I'm not tracking we, the we're marketing we're for the mil a mil millage. Because we don't even know what the millage, a proposed millage rate would be yet, right. is my understanding. Right. Yep. We, we don't know that right. yet, and the TAC is working on that. So the TAC is still forming and getting organized. So yeah. what I will say is that, you know, we have great board leadership. This consultant will provide great tactical leadership okay. in terms of moving forward. Um, in terms of the supports, um, the city has been gracious enough to um, provide us with um, technical assistance, educational assistance to a certain extent, and historical assistance so we can make the proper decisions. So we have a great team going in, and the enhancements coming out of that will be efficiencies, equity, and growth oriented. So having said that, we haven't determined any millage impact or any other thing along those lines. We have to get a pragmatic plan together and a strategy together for what the system will look like across all the municipalities. And so there's some nuances with that, and um, it's still very early, but sure. we're doing that work, getting that structure set. So the support is very much appreciated in terms of the processes of purchasing and things of that nature, but marketing rollouts and tactical rollouts, the tactical side will come from this consultant contract. Thank you for the clarification. I appreciate your service on the board. I know Commissioner Morris also serves as his commission representative on the board, so thank you. Commissioner Morris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so some of the questions that I kind of anticipated being asked tonight were about um, what specifically this consultant will be able to do for the tech. Um, so currently we do have uh, the city of Battle Creek as well as Calhoun County and some other uh, city representatives that are providing technical support like Eric said, but that can only get us so far. Um, so now at this point, the TAC is looking for a consultant to help uh, basically serve as an interim executive director, executive director um, and help us get policy set up. Uh, at this point, the reason why the TAC can't hold the contract itself is because we don't have, hold these funds so that we can execute the contract itself is because we don't have a bank account set up for the TAC yet. Um, it's still in the very, very early sense. stages. <laughs> so um, right now it makes sense to me that the city uh, executes this contract as we do have the most to gain or lose from um, this TAC decision. So I think that that kind of answers some of those questions. And like I said, Mallory does a great job with technical assistance, but that's all that she can do. So. Um, Basically, the TAC just needs to get to the next steps so that we can start talking about education or the possibility of a millage and whatever else. Thank you for your comments, Commissioner Morris. Any other comments? Mayor. Yes, Commissioner Ballard. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a question for you on this. Um, are any of the other municipalities putting money in toward this particular goal? Yeah, absolutely. It was an equitable distribution mm -hmm. between um, Albion, Springfield, um, the county, Battle Creek, and um, Marshall. Marshall. 
<laughs> yeah. Very good. I just wanted that on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other commission? Commissioner Smith. Um, <clears throat> and thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. City of Battle Creek is paying 50% of this. Do we have 50% of the representation on the board? Um, yeah, we have uh, probably more than 50%. Um, from what I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember my members. We do have more we, members we, on than yeah. any other municipality. But it, I'm aware we have the two seats we have two. Yeah. assigned to two. us. Two. We have two seats. And it's not a four-member board. No, you're correct. You're correct. And I mean, we, the commission certainly did discuss uh, the representation for the city and actually went back to the group to ask for additional seats. And that's how we went from one to two. I remember insisting on that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, I've already articulated my position. Thank you again for coming yeah. up. I really appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other com comments from the commission? See none, would you please vote on resolution 487? <coughs> Resolution 487 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is resolution 488, Madam Clerk. In the fall of 2022, the well casings at the Verona well field were inspected and televised. Upon viewing the camera footage, it was discovered that the casings were severely cracked or completely missing. Some casings some casings ensure that the surface water and other contaminants do not mix with groundwater being pulled to supply Battle Creek's drinking water. Concerns of potential surface water mixing due to the condition of the current casings were brought to Eagle immediately. Eagle responded with a significant deficiency violation notice on December 20th, 2022 that required a corrective action plan and scheduled within 30 days. The corrective action plan was developed on time and the Eagle's oversight and included continual testing and monitoring of production wells, development of plans, specifications, and bidding documents, and funding through Eagle's drinking water state revolving fund. Jones and Henry, the city of Battle Creek's water division engineering firm, was directed to develop plans and specifications for replacing all 22 production wells at the Verona well fields. Prior to the wells becoming production wells, they must first be tested to show that they can provide draw rates comparable to the well that is being replaced. Test wells are considered part of the project's preliminary engineering and eligibility, eligible for reimbursement through the DWSRF. On May 21, 2024, the Verona Well Fields project was bid to drill 22 wells with eight wells being converted to production wells using city funds that have been secured with a $10 million revenue bond. This is the first phase of the project to move ahead with construction while the DWSRF continues to work through the process of becoming available later this fall to early winter. This resolution, sex, except, this resolution seeks acceptance of the lowest responsive responsible bid for the Verona Well Field Replacement Project from Peerless Midwest Inc. in an estimated amount of $7,601,965.93 with unit prices prevailing. Move for approval for resolution uh, 488. Support. <clears throat> so moved and supported to approve resolution 488. Are there any comments by the commission? Seeing none, would you please vote on resolution 488. Resolution 488 has been approved. Steve, tell your staff thank you very much. Yep. Next item on our agenda is Resolution 489. The City of Battle Creek receives Federal Community Development Block Grants, CDBG funds, from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The intent of the CBG, CDBG program is to develop viable urban communities by providing decent housing and suitable living environment, and by expanding economic opportunities, principally for low to moderate income persons. The City of Battle Creek, in its 2020-2024 consolidation consolidated plan, and in subsequent annual action plans, identified eviction diversion as a strategy to help members of vulnerable populations access eviction diversion resources and ongoing housing case management. 
Additional data collected through the public engagement process and from consult consultation with local agencies that work with at-risk populations suggests that many of the families that struggle with housing often have credit issues or a prior, evic prior eviction. This funding was approved in 2020, the 2023 Annual Action Plan as public service grant to follow up on the 2022-2023 funding of $60,000. The program has been successful in helping tenants avoid eviction and providing legal services. These proposed amendments to this my apologies. This $35,000 agreement with Michigan Advocacy Programs continues to work the eviction diversion and case management. This resolution seeks approval of the eviction diversion agreement with the Michigan Advocacy Program doing business as legal services of South Central Michigan for $35,000 with community development block grant funding 2023 program year. Move for the approval of resolution 489. Support. The move is supported to approve resolution 489. Are there comments by the commission? Seeing none, would you please vote on resolution 489? Resolution 489 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is Resolution 490. Madam Clerk. In February 2023, Ford Motor Company announced plans to build an electric vehicle battery plant in Marshall Township. The location where the plant was to be located has been transferred pursuant to Public Act 425 to the City of Marshall and has been rezoned to an I-3 to allow for construction of the battery plant. Lou Oval Battery Michigan LLC plans to develop 500 acres of the Marshall site with room for expansion. The City of Marshall and the City of Battle Creek will be entering into an interlocal agreement where the City of Marshall will contract with the City as a customer for the city to provide water, which the city of Marshall will in turn combine with water supply from the city of Marshall and distribute to Blue Oval and future users of the major campus. The city will also contract with Emmett Township to provide certain water supply to Emmett, to Emmett Township in part through the infrastructure being constructed by MEDA. The project generally consists of three parts. A, developing the water transmission and water supply for Blue Oval in collaboration with Ford Motor Company, Wallbridge, and their subcontractors, MEDC, MSF, and Granger Hoffman, among other project stakeholders. B, developing the major campus in collaboration with MEDC, MSF, and the cities of Marshall and the Battle Creek, and the townships of Marshall and Emmett, among other project stakeholders. And C, city undertaking limited construction work on city infrastructure at the Verona Well Field to be contracted by the city with one or more contracts with two subcontractors for which the city establishes a single budget. Upon completion of the facility's ownership of the MEDA fund infrastructure located within the city or within the city-owned facilities will be transferred to the city for a dollar. The city has or will separately enter into contracts with Granger Hoffman subcontractors for for city improvements to the Verona pump station, specifically electrical, mechanical, and control work for the existing high service pumps number two and number three, referred to as VFD installation. This resolution seeks the authority for the city manager to execute a MOU and with MEDA for water infrastructure improvements. Move for approval for resolution 490. Support. The movement is supported to approve Resolution 490. Are there any comments by the Commission? Commissioner Simmons. Just a point of clarification uh, from the city manager, city staff, about I don't recall ever having been asked to sign an NDA on this project. Is that correct? I, I don't remember doing that. I, it's been referenced many times tonight. Yes. But I don't believe that you did. Why? Well, I have not. No, nor, nor would I have. Um, and then, again, this is, this is um, just providing the water. We're not bringing any sewer back from this plant that could have potentially no. toxic materials or anything into our, into our our mission. Okay. No wastewater. Thank you. 
Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, I want to direct this towards Jill because we already had the conversation previously, but I just want to you know, articulate it for you know, the crowd. Um, my primary concern on this is that we are equitably distributing the costs associated with operating this transmission. Um, I'm talking about water readiness fees specifically. This agreement does not establish those, correct? Correct. It doesn't have any. There's, there will be s separate agreements um, with the city of Marshall, and we'll have to have something with um, Emmett Township for permission for the water to come through there. This is um, really just dealing with infrastructure improvements and giving permission for them to do those on city property and that they'll transfer ownership and specifying you know, part of it is, is going to be a separate contract that the city has because that's work for the city. That's really all this is. It's not, I mean, that's what the underlying work is done, is being done to accomplish, but it has nothing to do with the provision of water or, or charges or anything like that. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other, commis um, Commissioner Patrick O'Donnell. Hey. So to clarify, this is just really getting a work order together so a company can come and do infrastructure changes, electrical, mechanical, so that they can eventually have water service that's needed and then later they become our customer, correct? Well, it's not really the work order. It's, it's um, like I said, it's giving, because other workers being paid by someone other than the city are going to come in and do the work. And so we have to give them permission to come in and do this work on, on city property, and then we deal with who's going to own it, the city's going to own it, and part of it the city will separately contract, but that's what it's about, is facilitating getting work done. I guess my words for work order meant like just permission to be on the property to do the work, is that we're just... That, it's, that, it's, it's that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, yeah. that's that's not the kind of agreement I do with my company, is like we're, we're contracting you to come do some work and we're allowing you to be on our property. That's what I meant by work order. So it's just a blanket, and then they're giving it back to us for a dollar for using the property. So that's basically, yeah. Correct. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, would you please vote on resolution 490? Resolution 490 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is Resolution 491. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. In instances of an emergency where the police department may have a number of competing matters in which it must respond, occasionally assistance of a neighboring police agency is needed. The City of Battle Creek has historically had mutual emergency agreements with the City of Kalamazoo. The Mutual Police Assistance Agreement Act requires that this arrangement be reduced to writing and address certain matters, including but not limited to, describing the nature of the emergency, who must declare the emergency, under which circumstances police assistance may be asked for, and by which city officials, and shall provide for the payment of services and what powers, duties, and responsibilities, and under whose authority officers to duty our officers are called to duty with the terms of the mutual aid agreement shall serve. This resolution seeks authority for the city manager to sign the attached law enforcement mutual aid agreement with the city of Kalamazoo regarding the Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety. Move for approval for resolution 491. Support. It's been moved and supported to approve resolution 491. Are there any comments or questions by the commission? Uh, Patrick O'Donnell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the light of the uh, last couple of months of our severe weather, um, I've known that uh, some of the areas have needed mutual aid due to emergency services. And um, I'm in agreement with this because you, you never know what's going to happen and, and um, sharing services. And it, some, some communities didn't have this all set up, so it was a little more difficult to get services to them when it needed to be right away. So I'm, I'm looking at this as a great proactive approach to helping city of Kalamazoo uh, and our city as needed if something happens. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other commission comments? Seeing none, would you please vote on resolution 491. Resolution 491 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is resolution 492. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. 
parcel of property located on Hamblin Avenue is being made available for the city to purchase through the tax foreclosure process and is located right at the confluence of the Battle Creek and Kalamazoo Rivers. It is right across the river channel from additional property owned by the city and could be a crucial, critical to widening the river at the confluence. When exercising its first right of refusal for the purchase of the foreclosed properties under state law, the purchase price paid by the city is determined by whether the notice, a notice of claim has been filed on a property. If a notice, notice of claim has been filed, the greater of the fair market value or minimum bid must be paid. The city had hoped to purchase the property for the minimum bid price, but we learned that a notice of claim had been filed. The city is prepared to pay fair market value due to its importance to the river restoration process. The property will be purchased with funds transferred to the city from the DDA. This resolution seeks authority to declare intent to purchase and authority to purchase foreclosed real estate parcel number 52-0390-00-147-0 on Hamblin Avenue. Move for approval for proclamate or resolution uh, 492. Support. Been moved and supported to approve resolution 492. Are there any comments by the commission? <coughs> Seeing none, would you please vote on resolution 492? <coughs> resolution 492 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is resolution 493, Madam Clerk. As permitted under the Michigan Open Meetings Act, a public body upon a two-third majority vote may meet in a closed session in order to discuss a written legal opinion with its attorney, which is provided for under MCL 15.268H, and the other statute that provides that exemption is found in the Michigan Freedom of Information Act, MCL 15.2431G. This resolution, if approved, will set a closed session on a legal matter immediately following the regular commission meeting on July 2nd, 2024. Move for approval for resolution 493. Support. Been moved and supported to approve resolution 493. Are there any comments by the commission? Seeing none, would you please vote on resolution 493. Resolution 493 has been approved. Next item on our agenda is general public comment. If you'd like to make general public comment regarding matters over which the city commission has control, please raise your hand and wait for us to acknowledge you to come forward to the podium. You'll have three minutes to make your comment. Please state your name and address prior to beginning your comment. Are there any public comments? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Rebecca Sebring, Fredonia Township. So I know you've covered this before. There's a worldwide takeover by the World Economic Forum, the Chinese Communist Party, parts of the UN, and the people in the countries that sold them out. Here in Marshall and Battle Creek, we've got the uh, Meta Mega Site Blue Oval, the, the cattle connection. It is the Chinese Communist Party. You should have learned that. Um, so what we're doing here is you are players in enabling the Chinese Communist Party on their initiative handcuff. This is to handcuff the U.S. energy-wise through battery and solar power. They own 80% of both of those. Um, and uh, we, we gave you the 15-page letter from the special counsel on the CCP to Homeland Security basically says they're using Uyghur, Uyghur labor slaves and to make things. And then it also said in there, if you paid attention to it, basically, if anyone in the U.S. does business with them, there will be repercussions. I hope you guys have thought about this. Anyways, you are uh, in the, you're engaging in commerce with a foreign enemy. For real. This is a security risk. This is more than just me saying it now. You guys really need to think about what you're doing just like Marshall does. You're putting a military right in their backyard. You all have no idea what's really going on in there. 
I don't see it coming to fruition. And I do believe with your water thing, you guys might be liable for any toxins. Do you, you know they're going to be tearing batteries down? That's even more toxic than what they're going to originally was going to do. Do you realize that? I hope you do. And this solar panel thing, since I got another minute, I'll let you know about the solar panels. They give off black radiation, heat up our atmosphere and ozone, causing severe weather in the areas where they're at. And then when the hail hits them, they break and they give off PFOF, and then they contaminate the ground and everything around it. And P or, uh, this PFOF stuff is very hazardous to humans and animals. You know, good prevails over evil, and God's got our back. I tell you what, you might want to get your karmic debt right now while you're alive because those things are real. If you've ever had a bad day, it's probably because you did something bad to somebody or something along the way. You had a good day, you probably got it back. You guys need to think about this just like everybody in Marshall. And um, I guess I'm just, whatever, I'm not going to relinquish my position. My family's been in this town, Marshall, for 122 years. There's no way I'm giving up my land and my rights to that town. Thank you, Rebecca. Are there any? Yes. Yes. Hello, Adam Heikela. Uh, Bedford Township. Um, been here before. Talk to you guys. No, uh, don't come back much because addressing a lot of our local community boards is uh, is a big waste of breath for most of us in this community <clears throat> because we've seen how you operate. Um, I would thank Jake, Commissioner Smith, for uh, being the one that did not sign an NDA, which is a good thing. That's uh, maybe he wasn't here that day, and that's why he didn't sign it. I don't know, but no, I don't think so. I think Jake is a good guy. I think Jake has been trying to do the right thing. He's most likely been blackballed, like I was, by all of you controllers in this community, because he wants to do the right thing. Um, you all voted on. Some, I mean, <laughs> we have two months in a row here in this community uh, where where you, Mr. Mayor, try to claim that. What you're doing is to bring people together. But what you all approve is two months now of a community celebrating pride. Okay, pride, which if any of you are a Christian believer in any capacity, is what sent Lucifer away from heaven here on earth to then control and deceive you all to be prideful about what you do with your private parts. <laughs> right now, you guys are telling all of us in the community that we're supposed to be bonded together with some people that maybe we, we don't agree with what they do. But, but that's supposed to be a bonding thing for our community? You as leaders have agreed to now celebrate a whole month worth, put it out on a flag out front, let everyone know how proud we are about what people do with their private parts. It's pretty disgusting. It's disgusting. And I'm friends with many people that I don't, that you wouldn't think I'm friends with. All of you think, oh man, he's just some bad guy. I just help people in this community. Like the person that you talked about, that person most likely did, just did things in his community, in his neighborhood for people. I just do things for people in communities where I'm at. Not so much here anymore because this community is, is a dying cesspool because of boards like yourselves and the decisions that you make that you ignorantly make because you don't know the things that you're doing and the detriment that you do when you celebrate pride in private parts. It's just sad. Any of you that calls yourselves a Christian in any capacity, or, or a lover you're done. of God. You're done. Thank you for your yeah, comments. Your well, thank you for your comments. Yes, David. I had a comment on uh, 
bringing things to the boat. We think the, the government, the people, has got too much authority. And people just don't know what's going on. I've seen movies for our water. Our factories taking in water to produce their company. And water level is going down and poison is getting in the water. I've seen some shows on this. And um, I think we should have be more an old open voice that the American people should be more involved and have more right to vote. We do a lot of things here in this commission, our closed sessions, we're trying to keep things closed sessions and shorten our meetings up and you know, we want to get the meetings true real quick, but there's a lot at this battery plant. There's a whole lot more there than people realize. People don't even begin to realize what's even going on over there. You know, all these factories are being built like that. We don't even begin to know. We should get involved and know more what is going on, and I think it should be more open voice and more open elections, whatever, so people can voice their opinions more. I think it's too close, it begin to be too close up <coughs> in a dictatorship, just too much. So I, I have to say that. Thank you, David. Joe? Joe Harris, Battle Creek. Um, golly, where do I begin? Uh, I agree with everything what the gentleman says there. More people need to get involved. I think, though, it kind of begins with government leaders across the board. Um, going to these meetings, other meetings, the one thing I've noticed is, is transparency. And it just doesn't seem like there's enough. We wonder why people are frustrated. We wonder why people are upset. I don't think there's enough transparency happening. I honestly don't. If there's nothing to hide, tell everybody. Let the chips fall where they may. That's just it. Um, in regard to the flying the flags, I've never big a, been a big fan of flying any other flag except the American flag, the state flag, and the city flag, and here's my reasons why. <clears throat> we are all American citizens. We all live in the state of Michigan. We all live in the city of Battle Creek. Those three things unite us all. That's my reason behind that. But um, I think that's all I got, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Any other public comments? Yes, sir. Good evening, uh, Alex Harris, Albion, Michigan. Just wanted to address the commissioners uh, and please remind you to get with your constituents and express the um, August primary election and the need to get out and vote and express your voice that way. Uh, there's obviously a lot of issues going on here in the 44th district in Battle Creek and check out your candidates and express your vote. Thank you. Good luck, thank you. Any other public comments? Did. Did you want to speak? <laughs> Again, Barry Wayne Adams, 622 West Green Street. Uh, uh, the whole EV battery thing is completely falling apart. Uh, <clears throat> catastrophic explosion in South Korea at an EV battery plant uh, killed 22 people. Uh, and if you happen to take two breaths of that toxic cloud from the combustion of lithium, uh, you're dead. So this is the kind of toxic arena that we are creating over at the Mega Mess. Uh, you know, they had regulations in South Korea. They didn't work very well. Just like we had regulations about the Enbridge thing. They didn't work very well. People talk about regulations before the accident, and then after the accident, they talk about how heroic the firefighters are. Uh, in Detroit, 
at the EV car factory. Massive lithium fire required uh, 18 fire trucks, uh, 60 firefighters were called who could do nothing more than just be a standing audience because you can't put out a lithium fire. It's unquenchable. But this is what these people, without any higher order understanding of our relation to nature, is making in their faulty decision-making process. <clears throat> and uh, with the flying the non-governmental flag, as soon as you do that, you open yourself up to uh, claims of uh, viewpoint discrimination. So now that you've done this, you must allow every other form of flag, organizational flag, without gatekeep gatekeeping. If you do gatekeep, then you're subject to lawsuit. So you opened up a real big door. I hope you have fun with that. Uh, the continuation of the megasite litigation, the referendum appeal, uh, still is an operation. Uh, the decision of the Court of Appeals is very shaky, uh, particularly in light of uh, 28 U.S.C. 2072B, which indicates that you can't create a procedural facade or a procedural front to deny constitutional rights. And that's exactly what happened uh, with the denial of the uh, committee's uh, lawsuit based on uh, the fact that it was done by virtue of uh, extraordinary writ, the writ of mandamus, instead of the... Uh, I'll be back. Thank you. It's unconstitutional. Any other public comment? Yes, Autumn Smith. Autumn Smith, Battle Creek, Article 1, Section 5, every person may freely speak, write, express, publish his views on all subjects being responsible for the abuse of such right. No law shall be enacted to restrain or abridge the liberty of speech or of the press. <sighs> Open Meetings Act, 15.263, Section 3, a person must not be required as a condition of attendance to a meeting of a public body to register or otherwise provide his or her name or other information or otherwise fulfill the condition present to present uh, attendance. You cannot require a person to give their name in order to attend a meeting, but you guys do that anyways. And uh, yeah, I can't even summarize my displeasure in the things that I come up here all the time. You guys say you want people to come to the meeting. You say you want people to say their piece. You say you want more participation than the scarce crowds that we have. But when you have people that say unpopular speech, which is what the First Amendment was meant to protect, you gavel them out, you don't like what they say, you have them arrested, claim they disrupted the meeting, so on and so forth. Anyways, I wanted to uh, go back and state that Mr. Simmons said he didn't sign an NDA. Yeah, you did. I have a copy of it. I didn't bring it with me. You signed one with Michigan Economic Development Corporation. And yeah, we might have been talking about MEDA, but they all work together. I've talked about this term called interlocking directorates, and that's exactly what that is, is multiple boards doing business with multiple boards, multiple people sitting on multiple boards and stuff like that. And it's all this like criminal gangster RICO front stuff. So although you may not have signed it directly with MEDA, the one that you did sign is the front group. It's like a, you know, a bigger group, a smaller group, a local group. And so you can say, y'all know all you want. I've got your NDA, buddy. Say no all you want. All right, all right. <clears throat> direct your comments towards me. Well, have me. him direct his head shaking to you. Well, I ask you to direct your comments. I am, because you signed one, too. And I would sign it again. Oh, thank you for saying that. Thank you for incriminating yourself because, like Mr. Adams said, there's a criminal investigation going on, and thank God, sometimes you just got to let the people speak for themselves and they tell on themselves. You don't even have to. But it's wrong. It's wrong. This is not, you know, why would you sign one again? Like we said, why do you want to operate in secrecy? Why do you need to 
exempt information that's normally available to the public and relabel it <laughs> confidential exempt information, and then they have to tell you where to hide it in FOIA. Did you not sign and take an oath to protect, defend the Constitution of the state of Michigan and the, and the federal Constitution? Yeah, you did, because I have a copy of your oath of office, too. So good luck with that. Remember in November. Thank you for your comments. You're, you're done. You're welcome. Any other public comments at this time? Yes, John. John Kennevick, 234 South Avenue. I'm going to talk about for one moment the ARPA money. And ARPA money was given to all the villages, townships, municipalities, Cal Calhoun County, the counties, states. And a long time ago, I'm going to tell you a little story that it would explain things economically. And what that was, was about 50 years ago, I was trying to figure out the budget, the federal budget. And I said, well, the, the Congress of the United States passed the budget for, say, $34 trillion. The Secretary of the Treasury says, we only got $25 billion. The Congress says back to the, um, to the Secretary of Treasury, you don't understand. By law, you've got to come up with that $5 trillion difference. So they kind of wink at each other. And so the Secretary of Treasury writes a note. And he says, I, the Secretary of Treasury, say the citizens of Battle Creek or the country, the citizens, owe back that $5 trillion. Now, we have ARPA money. Where'd that money come from? Where was it generated? Was it drawn in? Because what I see here is a debt, a national debt. So I'm going to give you a couple of numbers. These are reasonably accurate right now. Currently, the US debt clock just for the U.S. debt is $34,872,000. That's a pretty big number. Every citizen in the United States owes back to the federal government more than $266,000. But that's the little number. The big number is $216,916,000. What that, what's that number? That's the uninsured debt liability. Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. That is six times the US debt. So we can calculate from there, every citizen in this room that's a tax-paying citizen owes back approximately, let's see, $1,850,000. Excuse me, that's not correct. Yeah, it's correct. 200, excuse me, I got that wrong. You owe back more than $217 trillion, and that's accelerating. You add that to the national debt, and you're at the 200, you're at the amount of $1,850,000. While all this is going on, this commission has been taking out loans and mortgaging everyone's lives, lives in Battle Creek. They've been swindling the citizens in the past and right now. So, well. That's what happens when you run things into the ground. It can't last forever. Thank you. Any other public comments? Seeing none, any commission comment, comments? Seeing none, we're going to recess and we'll be back. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay. That one's a chair. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's just the heat. Everyone's gone. I'll stand up. No, they're out in the parking lot. Yes. Oh, man. Yep. Right. I did. Yes, dear. I did. Right. Yes, she Coming back from recess, and I'm going to call upon Commissioner Reynolds to read a resolution. Motion to appoint William Kim as city attorney effective August 1st, 2024, subject to the terms of employment and recommended by the search committee, HR director, and the city manager. Support. There's a motion on the floor, and there is support. Are there any comments by the commission? Seeing none, um, we'll call roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Ballard. Yes. Commissioner Lance. Yes. Commissioner Morris. Yes. Commissioner O'Donnell. Yes. Mayor Binky. Yes. Commissioner Reynolds. Yes. Commissioner Simmons. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. And Vice Mayor Sophia. Yes. Unanimous, thank you. Motion has been approved. Um, at this time, we'll have any additional commission comments, and Commissioner Patrick O'Donnell's asked for a comment. I just want to wish uh, the community and everyone a happy Fourth of July. We, we're, uh, we're just uh, this country's bravery, and we're home of the free because of the brave. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Any other commission comments? Hearing none, we'll declare the meeting adjourned. Have a good night.